It's on. <laughs> Fellow compatriots, Bosnians, Herzegovinians, Bosniaks, Americans, dear dignitaries, dear friends. Welcome to this momentous and festive gathering. This is a gathering of dedication. Dedication to our love for our homeland, beloved Bosnia-Herzegovina, and dedication to our resolve to preserve it. A dedication to our joy celebrating its independence and a dedication to our determination and our courage to protect it and keep it independent, prosperous, proud, and strong for its future generations. On this very day, 30 years ago, an NEU-approved referendum to decide the future of Bosnia took place. And when all votes were tallied, the peoples of Bosnia, by overwhelming democratic majority, had declared their decision to rejoin the ranks of modern-day European nations, the ranks of nations it so proudly filled for centuries. That decision, honored by the United Nations and international community, sadly, was not without its detractors. Under the guise of preserving Yugoslavia, a once formidable federation that was being irreversibly broken up by Slovenia, Croatia, and North Maced Ma North Northern Macedonia claiming their independence. Serb nationalist forces headquartered in Belgrade and operating, operating outside of Serbia proper staked their claims on parts of Croatia and much of Bosnia, unfolding and unleashing the plan of creating a so-called Greater Serbia. That same evening, I, who was a young lad at the time, returning home from a night out, was pulled over by masked men in fatigues, armed with automatic weapons, manning a barricade, at a busy intersection. I was ordered out and sent to walk home. Sarajevo, my hometown, woke up the next day paralyzed by a network of barricades with masked men demanding that the independence referendum be annulled. Those barricades were soon disbanded, but as we were about to learn, they were merely a dress rehearsal for a full-blown attack and aggression on Bosnia-Herzegovina that would be unleashed with the, along with the international recognition of Bosnia as an independent country. What would follow would be three and a half years of long aggression that included genocide and was aimed at obliterating the very existence of Bosnia as a polity. After a dual aggression and attempt to carve out Bosnia between Serbia and Croatia, an arrangement that would follow those neighboring countries, would allow those, those neighboring countries to settle their own differences, a tenuous peace was reached in 1995. Thanks in great part to the efforts of the US to build and support a fledgling democracy in Bosnian multi-ethnic society. 30 years on, Bosnian state prevails, survives, and marches on. But that plot remains a weary tread through political minefields, a mental reflection of real, deadly minefields that still litter Bosnian's beautiful landscape. 
peace in Bosnia still remains fragile, since political zombies that haunt Bosnia today understood the peace from 95, not as a lasting covenant binding us all to a better future, but as a mere lull in the efforts to break up Bosnia, nursing their frustrations in the meantime and biding their time until the right moment came. As their patience wore thin, Bosnia's detractors embodied in the leadership of Serbia, political spawn of notorious Slobodan Milosevic and war criminal Vojislav Šešelj. In the pro-Putin puppet regime of the Bosnia's smaller entity Republika Srpska and in the pro-Putin Croat nationalist sustained sophisticated KGB inspired and masterminded campaign of attempts to dismantle Bosnia's institution and to, min to diminish its stature as an independent country. But as they failed then, they are failing now and will continue to fail in the future for two principal reasons. One is a contemporary one. Their major sponsor, Putin's autocratic military regime in Russia, is engaged in its own ruthless, senseless invasion campaign against Ukraine, managing en route to antagonize much of the free world and earning crippling sanctions and condemnations by virtually every democracy on the planet. For about a week now, those loud bullies threatening the future of Bosnia have gone silent, calculating their odds and worried about their ill-gotten assets amassed through corruption and political patronage. The other reason why those who deny Bosnia fail and will continue to fail is a much bigger, perennial, everlasting one. Bosnia is not just geography. Bosnia is its people. Bosnia is not just its people. Bosnia is an idea of a multi-ethnic society. Bosnia is not just an idea. Bosnia is a dream. And dreams, my friends, is what sustains us. Just as grains and water nourish our bodies, our dream of Bosnia nourishes our souls. And our bodies, our minds, our souls stand strong. We are Bosnia. Bosnia, 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 Bosnia. Bosnia here, and you bet in the Bosnia itself, the entire country of Bosnia. While the situation today may be more precarious than it has ever been in this century, and we are tragically reminded that security and, and freedom are so precious, the occasion for this gathering is one of joy and celebration. Helping us celebrate today our dear guests, distinguished dignitaries, representatives of the diplomatic corps here in New York. Centuries ago, a noble lady from Bulgaria by the name of Dorothea became the first Bosnian queen, marrying Tvrtko, then the Bosnia's first king. 30 years ago, Bulgaria was the first country to officially recognize the independence and sovereignty of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Today, we have the pleasure of being in company of another noble lady from Bulgaria, Her Excellency Lazechara Stoeva, permanent representative of Bulgaria to the United Nations. Ms. Stoeva has an extensive international diplomatic experience focusing on the field of international cooperation and international disarmament as a means of achieving lasting peace. Ms. Stoeva, please. Yes, okay. Um, 
Thank you very much. I haven't prepared a speech uh, because I thought I would speak um, off the cuff today. Um, first of all, congratulations on your Independence Day. Today, more than ever, it is important to value independence. Today is a day where we realize that freedom and independence is not for granted, and all of us need to make every effort to fight and defend it. Today is a day where we realize that any peace is better than a war. So, um, and you know war, you know peace, and you know you have to defend peace. You know that your future is European and the European Union is open for you. So we hope that soon enough we'll be able to welcome you there. Congratulations. And um, we will both see you. Thank you. Blagodaram. Thank you very much. Growing up in Sarajevo, I first learned about brutality of totalitarian regimes by going to school with children of Chilean political exiles. Scattered worldwide, they fled their home to escape the ruthless arm of the Pinochet government that killed by the thousands. And as, were pe as people were fleeing, that country, the reign of terror, one man, our next speaker, went to Chile. A true gentleman and a courageous man, he went to the hornet's nest to secure a release of a good friend, and he succeeded. A gifted diplomat, he served as Venezuela's permanent representative to the United Nations in the 1990s, and as the President of the Security Council of United Nations during the referendum for Bosnia's independence. He personally visited Bosnia in 1993 and call it, called it a slow-motion genocide, ominously predicting events that would follow two years later. Through his dedicated work, he left a lasting legacy on the proceedings of the Security Council instituting the so-called ARIA formula, a process for those who are unrepresented and disenfranchised to address the Security Council members in a confidential setting. His Excellency Diego ARIA is a staunch supporter of justice and peace, and such he is an honorary citizen of Sarajevo. Empathizing with the struggles of his homeland, Venezuela, where he continues to advocate for justice and freedom, I consider His Excellency Diego Aria as an honorary Bosnian as well. Please. You know, I used to be a foreigner. I used to be a foreigner when I was at the United Nations for Bosnians, but not anymore because I am now a citizen of Sarajevo too, thanks to the generosity Woo! of the Sarajevo people. You know, I dedicated uh, four years of my life, fundamentally, to the fight to preserve a such an extraordinary multi-ethnic society in the middle of Europe. There was not a more ecumenical capital in Europe than Sarajevo. And when I was in the Security Council, I could not believe the international community indifference to the plight of the Bosnians. Today I'm watching, actually very surprised and happy, the reaction of the world to the Ukrainian invasion by the Russians, a criminal invasion by the Russians to Bosnia, to, to Ukraine. And I have to think that we were not able to gather so much support for the plight of the people of Bosnia. I was part of that international community that failed Bosnia. Today I'm here because I was, I raised my hand to recognize Bosnia as a new member of the United Nations exactly 30 years ago. At that time I was the president of the Security Council. And I'm very happy to be here today with my friend, the Bosnian ambassador Sven, with the Romanian ambassador, the Bulgarian ambassador, and the Council of Turkey. 
and my Boston friends who invited me. I, I will continue to, to promote the, the wonderful idea of what Bosnia is that, that has been so well expressed today. Thank you so very much. We have gathered here in the continent of North America to celebrate the Independence Day of our homeland in Europe. We have heard addresses by two dignitaries from two continents, from Europe and from South America. And now we are going to hear a brief address by a representative of a glorious nation that spans two continents. And I'm not talking about Russia. Mr. Reyhan Özgür is the General Consul of the Republic of Turkey in New York. He is a seasoned diplomat with experience in security and NATO affairs. He is also a kind, soft-spoken man who graces us with his presence at many of our events, demonstrating the commitment of his country to the friendship and brotherhood between our two nations. Mr. Özgür. Esteemed ambassadors, honorable members of the diplomatic corps and consular corps, esteemed representatives of the Bosnian Herzegovina Islamic Center of New York, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate the 30th anniversary of independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's a great privilege for me to attend this meaningful ceremony, flag raising ceremony today. I would like to thank Bosnian and Herzegovina Islamic Center of New York for extending an invitation for this event. Turkey was among the first countries to recognize Bosnia and Herzegovina and was also among the first to establish an embassy in Sarajevo. Taking this opportunity, I commemorate late Ali Ezzet Begovic, the first president of the internationally recognized independent state of Bosnia with respect and gratitude. He was an intellectual, great statesman and also brave commander. That's why he was called as wise king. May Allah bless his noble soul. Amen. Let me express that Turkey fully supports Bosnia Herzegovina's peace, prosperity, stability and territorial integrity. We must support those who seek to heal the wounds of the past and stand with all the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina for a better future. Common culture and the deep-rooted bonds between our peoples constitute the solid foundations of brotherhood between our two nations. We stand in solidarity with Bosnia and Herzegovina as always. As the Council General of the Republic of Turkey, we are ready to for joint, for joint cultural projects with the Bosnia and Herzegovina community in New York. There is a strong Turkish-American community here in New York and around. We would like to see more coordination of Turkish Americans with their Bosnian friends and brothers. Also, Turkish American non governmental organizations are ready to cooperate with Bosnian and Herzegovina American NGOs in culture and, and other projects. In this sense, we are ready to explore ways of further cooperation between Bosnian and Herzegovina Islamic Center of New York and the Turkish American civic associations. We can also cherish our cultural specialities. As you know, new Turkish house was inaugurated and it is already in service for the friendly immigrant communities in New York. Likewise, doors of the Turkish house are wide open for our Bosnian brothers and sisters. Once again, congratulations for Independence Day. Thank you. Allah Amin. And thank you for being the flag bearer, the Bayraktar of our friendship. I'm going to now invite uh, one of our members, Adila Todic, to recite a short poem. Bosaniju moja, Bosniju moja, bolna mi ne bila. Ti privjesak ničiji nisi, ni čest, ni prčija. 
Bosna si bila, Bosna ćeš biti, Bosna, bosanska sva. Osvajača tvojih silnih, tko više imena zna, a ti si i dalje, Bosana moja, Bosna, bosanska sva. Biseno, Boseno, Bosno moja, tko te svojatao ne bi, kad su i voda i ptica i cvijet bivak našli u tebi. Ginut će za tebe bošnjak tvoj, ma bila pod noktima sva, da nikada više bolna mi ne budeš, suzo moje i sna. Sretan dan nezavisnosti svim bosancima i hercegovcima i svima onima koji vole Bosnu i Hercegovinu. Hvala, Adila. Thank you very much. My best friend from childhood started working for the Bosnian embassy in Washington, D.C. as it first opened its doors. And I asked her from halfway across the world what the new ambassador was like. And she's a very harsh judge of character of people and I didn't really expect much and she told me He's a diplomatic Rambo. I don't have a prepared introduction for our next speaker because I don't think he really needs one. He doesn't need one. He's, he's been the Bosnia's first ambassador to the United States and he was also an entrepreneur when his homeland called him to serve as a diplomat. He was also Bosnia's Minister of Foreign Affairs and as far as I'm concerned, the best one that we had so far, at least in the period of peace. And if I could have it my way and Bosnia could, have, could wake up with one president, Sven Alkali would be my president if it, if it were one person. Minister, please. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, excellencies, it's uh, so proud to be Bosnian today. Looking all of these flags, joy in the people when we celebrate 30th day, 30th anniversary of our independence. We would remember those days, 29, February and 1st March, when people were gathering in the line to go and vote for the referendum. We, wouldn't, we didn't know what our country is going to be, uh, but now we know 30 years after, it's a democratic country, country we love so much, country which is fighting to preserve its multi-ethnicity, multi-faith, multi, multi uh, 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 focus on everything that the democracy brings to one country. But being such in the middle of Western Balkans, our Bosnia has been targeted from left to right. They want to dismember our beautiful country. They want to kill their people to do the second ethnic, ethnic cleansing. But this is not 1992 where we were not prepared for the aggression that came soon after. Now it's 2022 and Bosnian people are so much better organized. They are around the world. They will not stand idle if their country uh, being attacked again. We see that aggression is uh, happening in the, our neighborhood in Europe, which can be a dangerous flame. But Bosnia is standing very firm on, on its foundation of multi-ethnicity and devoted to preserve our democracy and our democratic value. When, uh, when I see all these people, young, old, coming here today 
and also I, I was uh, the other day in Chicago where a uh, young generation were really rising to the task bringing up Bosnia to the level of government, to the level of institutions, to the level of doctors, scientists. So Bosnia is being proud with their people here in the US and that they know that their love is for Bosnia down there. So today when we stand before you, when we are about to raise our very nice flag, although the other ones with the lilies, I see it's here, there. It's so... It's so beautiful and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll use this occasion to tell you one episode when regarding the, the, of the flag. When I was ambassador in Washington, I had the flair de lis, the 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 zasta u saljiljanima gore na jarbolu, i tad je došlo do promjene zastave. Meni je bilo strašno teško i sve sam odoljevao da ne, ne zamijen, ne izvršim zamjenu zastave. Uh, ali ipak došli su iz State Departmenta i kažu zamijente zastavu. Rekao, ja nemam ovu novu. Ne brinite, imamo mi. <laughs> I didn't say this episode in English because uh, I was moved with these people with the, with the flags around them. So, uh, thank you for being us with all this. Thank you to the organizers who really did a fantastic job bringing us all together and I know we are all, all the time together and here these decorations with American Bosnian Sanja flag is something that bringing us all together. Thank you dear friends, thank you for your support and we'll be looking for working together in a future time. Thank you. Hvala ministra Alkalaju and thank you for joining us here today. Uh, please stand for the anthem of America. After, after American. For, for the anthem of the United States of America and of Bosnia and for the raising of the flag.
Thank you, everyone. And now, before we all part our ways, I would want to read the pro proclamation from this peace assembly to support sovereignty and territorial integrity of the multi-ethnic society and the state of Bosnia-Herzegovina. That's addressed to Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations and a number of other dignitaries, including the International Criminal Court and Court of Justice. Respected, bearing in mind that Bosnia's Herzegovina is an internationally recognized, independent and sovereign state, a full member of the UN, a survivor of genocide, proved with adjudic adjudication at a UN International Court of Justice in The Hague, and that Thanks to domestic efforts with international support, it has made significant progress in the post-war and post-genocidal recovery, which the retrograde policies of Bosnia's neighbors seek to spoil by violating the constitutional order of this Bosnian state. We, the citizens of Bosnia-Herzegovina, our friends from the Balkans, Europe and America, gathered in New, Year, in New York for the, uh, on the March 1st referendum independence celebration and we bring you this proclamation which we send to you in hope of lasting peace and security in Bosnia, the Balkans and Europe. One, secessionist actions to the detriment of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the state of Bosnia-Herzegovina by Aleksandar Vucic, President of Serbia, Aleksandar Vulin, its Minister of Interior, and Milorad Dodik, nominal, me nominal member of the Presidency of Bosnia, and their close associates are directed at preparing and provoking armed conflict in Bosnia. We know this from recent exp experience of Serbian aggressive and irredentist policy politics, which caused genocide against the Bosnian nation. This is why their current aggressive posture has ground, give us grounds to suspect that they are ready to again commit serious violations of international humanitarian law, including the crime of genocide, which they denied despite the full judgments of the International Court of Just Justice in the, in the Hague. They are already, and, and, and they are ready to repeat their joint criminal enterprises identical to those already condemned by the ICTY and International Criminal Court, led, and, and those are the regimes led by the late Slobodan Milosevic, the president of Serbia, and late Franjo Tuđman, president of Croatia, against the state of Bosnia-Herzegovina and its peoples. Two, keeping in mind the above, we fear the violations of the Conventions on the Prevention and Punishment of Crimes of Genocide. Therefore, we urge Secretary General Antonio Manuel de Oliveira Guterres and other UN personnel to urgently investigate, prevent, and prosecute possible violations of the Genocide Prevention Convention through international courts and other mechanisms, including military intervention if necessary, under Article 5 of the 2007 UN Action Plan on the Prevention of Genocide. Three, we ask the US President Joe Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron, a German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to urgently and unconditionally send Bosnia and Herzegovina an invitation to join NATO. It is well known that according to NATO reports, parameters and verbal recognition, the armed forces of Bosnia-Herzegovina are one of the most capable armies and are in line with their military doctrine with individual NATO members. By sending an invitation for full membership of Bosnia, 
to the NATO system of peace and security, NATO would thus preventively stop the activities of the Russian Federation, not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also in the Balkans and elsewhere in Eastern Europe and ensure peace, security and stability of Bosnia. The stability that Belgrade and Zagreb seriously undermine through their proxies, Milora Dodik and Dragan Čović. Indeed, Bosnia's membership in NATO addresses the Balkan crisis and the malignant influence of the Russian Federation in China in the Balkans and Europe. Four, we ask all personnel, heads of state and the government of the European Union to urgently ensure a special status for Bosnia-Herzegovina in the negotiation for accessions to the European Union. The crisis in Bosnia over large-scale projects between Croatia and Serbia threatens to repeat the bloody conflicts of 1990s, when armed aggression against the sovereign and internationally recognized state of Bosnia resulted in crimes against humanity, including genocide. Members of the European Union, such as Croatia, Hungary, Slovenia and some other countries are helping implement this joint criminal enterprise against Bosnia and Herzegovina in the, in the secession of the Bosnian territory by Serbia with the full support of Russia and China. A special status in the European Union would mean Bosnia and Herzegovina to, identify, to ide intensify negotiations to meet the conditions for U EU membership and open push to NATO membership. This would also mean ensuring the inviolability of Bosnian state borders with both Croatia and Serbia. It is hope that this proclamation from New York will reach you and do will, that you will pay due attention to it. Please accept our expressions of utmost respect. For the citizens of Bosnia-Herzegovina and their friends in New York, the organizers of the assembly, Bosnian Herzegovinian Islamic Center from New York and Bosniak American National Association. Thank you everyone for coming. And as we part our ways, I always implore you to pay attention to the injustice that happens in the world because we as survivors of aggression, those who survived by the grace of God, our own efforts and the help from our friends, we now have this moral obligation to speak up whenever we see that injustice is happening. And the injustice is right now happening in the Ukraine. So I ask you to support that country as it fights to preserve its own independence and sovereignty. Slava Ukraini! God bless the United States of America! Živjela Bosna i Hercegovina!